It's like having a gluten allergy <laughs> and then eating a bunch of pumpkin bread. Is pumpkin bread especially high in gluten? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know you have a hard time staying away from it. I know that that's... Oh, yeah. What is just like... Whenever anyone brings one into the office, I go, you're the devil. (laughs) (laughs) And sometimes they actually are. It actually is Satan. Mm -hmm. Probably led to your collection of medieval swords and... Well, that's how I keep them weapons. away. When someone when someone comes in with treats to the office, I pull the near. I pull. Sometimes I have a dagger hidden in my in my forearm, and I whip it out, and I go, "Be gone, thee, <laughs> with thou rice crispy treats. Put them in the cubicle from whence thy came." <laughs> Welcome to INS, the International News Service, your source for the most important weird news from across the globe, with news analyst Kevin Harrison, actor, comedian, and musician Mike Weeby, and professional commentator Brian Camp. INS, the news you need. Right, welcome back to the International News Podcast with your host, Kevin Harrison, and our other I host... I think we're INS, the International yeah, News the Service. News service. We're providing something. Podcast, yeah. Can you, can you identify yourselves, please? Uh, co-hosts? <laughs> oh. That's, that's just trying to throw us off? No, you, 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 you do me. <laughs> I'm Mike Weeby. Okay, well, there we go. It was, it was an impersonation. <laughs> there we go. Weird. And I just like it. Yeah. I don't know why I okay. said it like that, but <laughs> mm-hmm. now you know the awful truth. Right. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the International News Podcast with your host, Kevin it's, Harrison. Again, it's the International it's News the Service. service Kevin. All right. Mm. Welcome to the International News Service uh. with your host, Kevin Harrison, and co hosts. Oh. oh, yeah. Brian Camp noted commentating person and mike weeby professional mma <laughs> fighter <laughs> oh yeah uh so our first story comes to us from la prensa which is mexico's largest newspaper the title is jealous wife allegedly attacks husband over photos of him with her as a younger woman recently police in Cajeme, mexico were called to the scene of a domestic disturbance after a wife found photos of her husband on her husband's phone of him in bed with a younger woman. Rather than asking for an explanation, the wife immediately grabbed a knife and began stabbing at the husband while hurling insults. The husband told police he only received a few minor cuts before he subdued the wife, but when he saw the pictures on his phone, he realized they were of They were old photos of him and his wife when they were first dating. The husband said he recently found the pictures in an old email and saved them to his phone. The wife was taken into custody by police and awaits trial for domestic violence charges. Sounds like a spicy marriage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Does it describe exactly what you can see in the photos? No, it's it said that they were having sex. That's all it said. Well, can you describe that for me? What that would well, look like? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know that it always involves stabbing, but you know it could. With the sex, <laughs> I feel like the uh, the the headline should be: "Woman hilariously tries to live up to a stereotype." <laughs> Right. Like, I always feel a little bad when I hear a story that reinforces the thing that I'm told to believe about a certain group. It's weird because, like, it's not, you know, there's a lot of kind of racist negative stereotypes, but that's one that is weirdly, like, nobody says it as a detractor, you know? Like, it's not like, oh, these people, they always do that. But the, 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 this, cause the stereotype is like Latin women, they're, they'll, stab you in the face but it's always like a but it's always delivered with this it's always delivered like a latin women you know they'll stab you Mm. in the 
it's not like a sexy <laughs> situation <laughs> that this woman might murder you over a That's random right. thing that is a the mm-hmm. simple misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. I want to get me some of that. Mike almost sounded like Monroe from <laughs> Too Close wow. from Comfort. Get me some of that. I want that. Monroe. <laughs> Monroe. Monroe. <laughs> And Monroe was a cop, right? I was dating a Latin woman and she stabbed me. <laughs> <laughs> I just got told to keep it down. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is not appreciation for the I know. really good Jim J. Bullock impersonation you do right yeah. now. <laughs> I feel like I should get more credit for how good that impersonation was right. and that I tied it into this situation. Right. Maybe it caused confusion. Maybe there was a question. Are you yeah. watching Hollywood Squares right now? Are you, you know? Yeah. Like, no, it's. Well, you know, yeah, I don't. I feel like we've exhausted everything we can say about this story without <laughs> delving into racism and possibly. We did delve into it. I'm not entirely certain. Right. But in an examining way, in a way where we're trying yeah. to uncover some of some societal ills, I think. Yeah. So it's perfectly appropriate. Mm-hmm. That's what a news service does. Do you know about peacocking, Kevin? It's called peacocking. It's when you put on something outrageous and a girl will come over and she'll go like, why are you wearing a suit of armor in the middle of the bar? <laughs> I don't know why she talks like that, but that's just that's, that's the that's type what, of women that are there. But she's that, like, why are you wearing right. that suit of armor in a bar? And you'll go, why aren't you wearing one? And then she'll be like, I never thought about it that way. And the next thing you know, you're waking up the next morning in, in the suit with her in bed. Is there a moment after you wake up where you're forced to answer the door with the helmet from the suit of armor covering your genitals? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think that has Big to happen. Time. And maybe after uh, several dates and a marriage, this woman ends up stabbing you over a misunderstanding <laughs> regarding some photos in a paper. Yeah, because so she have- finds you looking through an old Dungeons and Dragons manual, and you're like, <laughs> "What is? What are you doing with another? You're like that's a drawing. That's a drawing of a Valkyrie fighting a uh, fighting a Tiamat dragon." <laughs> And she just starts bashing you over the head with it, like, who's that slut? That's who's right. that slutty slut? <laughs> right. It, and you're it, like, I, well, I, it's not even, it's a drawing. It's drawn <laughs> by, it's a Frank <laughs> Frazetta drawing. But she's not hearing it, and she just beats the living shit out of you. Mm-hmm. And you're lying there in a bloody, a bloody pulp. And then <laughs> she, 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 she actually... She squats over you and takes a piss on you. Mm-hmm. I love that the type of woman who is beguiled by peacocking <laughs> is also the type of woman that will mistake a drawing for a photograph. <laughs> <laughs> like every once in a while, you find her just talking to a mirror, like a reflective surface. Yeah. She's confused. <laughs> who are you talking to? That bitch that's trying to look like me. That's right. <laughs> that bitch that's trying to steal my style. She's a she's a biter. She'd stab you with a bastard sword. Bastard sword's a sword that it's a it's a regular length, but you can hold it with one hand or two. I hope you go to the doctor someday, Mike, and when they ask you what are you what are you there for, just start talking about your loss of hit points. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I just. I don't know if I'm low on mana or what, Doc. I just. Yeah, I don't know if somebody put a curse spell on me or what, but I'm about. I'm on the regular, uh, down two or three hit points, and I think it's. I think it's because it's either because I it's I have a more sedentary lifestyle or I caught the gaze of a catoblepus. It's Eric. Is the Catobleepus Egyptian? Is that another cryptid? I think it would <laughs> yeah. make a theme of this. Well, thank God I haven't seen one of those really, because once they gaze into your eyes, you are going to have be you're gonna at least get some water weight gain, like at the very <laughs> least. 
Can we get back to the news, please, Kevin? Yeah. Yeah, if we're going to do this, it needs to be about the, the news. The reason we're here is to educate. You know? Yeah, well, yeah, obviously. The, the news is the reason the International News Service exists. And our next story comes to us from The Guardian. The title is Joe the Pigeon's Life Spared After Fake Lag Tag Shows He's Not from the U.S. A racing pigeon was believed to have survived a 7,500-mile flight from the U.S. to Australia after the exhausted bird was discovered in a Melbourne backyard. The pigeon had what's called a blue tag on its leg, indicating the pigeon's name was Joe, named after Joe Biden, and identified it as a pigeon that had disappeared from a race in Oregon on October 29th. Sleepy Joe. <laughs> yes, that is something they called him. <laughs> he was probably flying over there to snip a bunch of women. He's probably going to steal their election, too. Y'all know that about Sleepy Joe? He likes to sniff women. You think about doing it, what it would be like to just mm-hmm. sniff sniff somebody. They can't you stop you. Smells are free. That's what they say. Smells are free. Smell like a, a burger on candle, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Call back. <laughs> that, is a, that's, that's gonna, that's, that is a very difficult callback. I like it. I think callbacks work best when you end them with callback. Well, I, they do. Absolutely. Right. That's how, I mean, yeah. The that, whole to point me, is to beat somebody over the head with it, right? If I, if I say callback, that's essentially me doing like a, like a touchdown dance, doing an end zone dance. <laughs> So proud of yourself. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Just so happy about it. That's right. So if you guys, yeah. So if anyone listening hears me say call back, just know that I'm, I'm verbally doing the Super Bowl shuffle right down there. Right. I, I, I ain't here to cause no trouble. I'm just here to do the Super Bowl shuffle. All right. That continue. <laughs> A, a public outcry arose in Australia after its Department of Agriculture said Joe would be euthanized to prevent U.S. diseases from being transmitted to Australian birds. However, the American Racing Pigeon Union, that's a real thing, uh, made a statement saying Joe's tag was not genuine because Joe is a different species of pigeon than the one identified on the tag. Australia's Department of Agriculture subsequently confirmed that, quote, Joe the Pigeon Kevin. is highly likely Kevin, Kevin, to Kevin, be Kevin. Australian. Yeah. Kevin, uh, you need to do an accent. What, you want me to do an that's Australian not, accent? That's not the way that, yeah, yeah that's that not the way this person the way. sounded at all. Yeah, I'm not getting a sense of any of this when you... <laughs> right. All if right. you can't, if you can't gonna, it's going to be hard to talk about this if you can't put us in the shoes of what the Australian people are hearing when they turn on the news with their one channel that they have over there. All right. If they're able enough murder enough outlanders to get gasoline for their, what do you call it? Little generators so they can right. watch. It's a miracle. They're not eating these pigeons. That's what I don't get. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that is a hundred percent what that was. They were going to, they're trying to make it look like they are a civilized country when, when really they were going to eat the pigeon and share it amongst Right. Seven or eight of them, you know, that was going to be their whole dinner, and they're calling, I'm going to call it right. Pitchy Fly Fly Bad. <laughs> Pitchy Fly. That is it. Hey, we found us scary. a Pitchy Fly Fly. Mm-hmm. So, Australia's Department of Agriculture subsequently confirmed that Joe the Pigeon is highly likely to be Australian and does not present. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do that again. No, right? Thanks. It's so terrible. <laughs> yeah, why Keep are going. you doing? Why are you doing a Russian accent? <laughs> Joe the pigeon is highly likely to be Australian and does not present a biosecurity risk. A revelation that has saved Joe's life. When asked about Joe, acting prime minister Michael McCormick was quoted as saying, "I'm not aware of Joe's plight, or flight, or future." I'm happy to look into it and get back to you. Good luck, Joe. But if Joe has come in a way that has not met our strict biosecurity measures, then bad luck, Joe. Either fly home or face the consequences. This news reporter like recently got convicted <laughs> from the UK and sent over there. 
Right. Just so that's, that's the that's the prime minister speaking. Not a, not a why, why do you think Same the way difference. to send Australian is just to raise the pitch of your voice? That's, yeah, yeah. That's what he I don't got, understand. He got convicted uh seemingly over some public <laughs> masturbation type thing and got shipped <laughs> over there and they're just immediately like this is like last week. He got there and they're like, You're Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> they they want to eat the pigeon and they also want to advertise Australia's, you know, xenophobia and use a bird as the vehicle. Does everybody know that? Either fly home or face the consequences. Yeah. What does that mean? That's, well, the yeah. consequences were they were going to kill him. Yeah. You don't belong. Go home, bird. We don't yeah. want you here. That's, That's what they do to all Americans in Australia. They didn't do it to, they didn't do it to Tom Hanks. Mm-hmm. They made him stay there. They, they gave just him got COVID, him so he yeah, couldn't they tried leave. To kill him. <laughs> <laughs> they gave him COVID, so he couldn't leave. And they tried to get him to make a movie, and he was like, "I mean, I guess if I'm stuck here for a while." And then they gave him the script, and it was just Young Einstein Part Two. <laughs> but then when he read the script, it was the exact same thing as Young Einstein Part One. It was just like he's like, "I'm not. I'm like seventy. I'm like sixty years old." I'm 60 or 70. He couldn't remember because of the COVID. And uh, he was like, I don't, I don't want to do young. Einstein. And it doesn't make sense for me to be young Einstein because I'm at best. I could be old Einstein. And they're like, they didn't, they weren't going for it. They couldn't understand. They couldn't understand. Oh, but they're just, they're not. Well, don't grimace. We all know it's true. You saw, you've seen Mad Max. They're, they're the best job you can have over there. Is playing a flamethrower guitar. <laughs> That's like the best. That is literally the only job with healthcare over there. Well, Everything else is just foraging in the wasteland, or you know, like half the, over half their people. They they call themselves war boys, and they have. I think you're. I think you're confusing the genre of film you saw, Mike. I don't. You, th- you mean the the genre of documentary that I saw? I don't think it was intended. I don't think it was intended as such. It now was, I'm sure that there's, like all great films, there's a lot of truth in it. I'm sure they have water shortages. True. I'm sure it's based that, on a true story. Yeah, I feel like there should be more to say about this story, but it just seems like a simple case of mistaken identity. Our next story comes from us from KOIN Channel Six in Portland, Oregon. Ah, oh, I love that station. That's where I watch uh, all my old episodes of Empty Nest. <laughs> kind of a spiritual cousin to Too Close for Comfort, right? <laughs> Actually, it is a spinoff. Since we're talking spinoffs, it's a spinoff uh-huh. of The Golden Girls. Oh, um, no, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did somebody date the dad? Maybe they lived yes. in the same complex or something. I believe B. Arthur maybe did, but oh. he, yeah, he, yeah, he, he. I think within, if I'm remembering correctly, within the store's chronology, he got her pregnant, and they got an <laughs> abortion. And Joe Suzu dated Blanche. Mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah, yeah. Famously, it was. And uh, uh, Christy McNichol dated. Uh, dated Betty White. <laughs> Betty White character. Briefly. Right. A lot There's... of people are going to get these references from 1986. <laughs> <That's>, well, <laughs> call back. Is that, is that yep. appropriate? Is that when you That's say That's good. It? That's perfect. Perfect. Yes. Brian is breakdancing right now. <sighs> that I got I have to tell you, Mike, that feels good. Yeah, that it felt, does feel good, right? <laughs> that felt good. Yeah, I <laughs> like the idea that you can just <laughs> reference anything Pre now and go call back. Yeah. Man, remember when Joe Biden got accused of sniffing all those women? Call back. <laughs> call back. That's right. That's a that's, that's an extra callback because we mentioned it on the show and it's old. That's a twofer. It is. Our next story comes to us from KOIN Channel Six in Portland, Oregon. The title is Human composting now legal begins in Washington. In twenty twenty, Washington became the first state to approve human composting as an alternative to burying or cremating human remains. Advocates say composting uses less energy than other methods, and it's the only legal way for Washingtonians to be laid to rest on their own property in the form of mulch. 
Washington currently has three licensed facilities. Two received their first bodies in December, and the third expects to receive its first body soon. Composting takes several weeks and begins by laying a body in a large box with 200 gallons of wood shavings. Bacteria, protozoa, fungi, and oxygen are then added to speed up the reduction process, and the box is periodically rotated to break up the body and keep everything oxygenated. Humans have a lot of unnatural materials in their bodies that won't compost, too, like dental fillings, screws, and pacemakers. These have to be filtered out of the mulch. Uh, when it's completed, the family gets four 55-gallon drums of usable, possibly haunted compost. <laughs> Definitely haunted compost. In my case, no one will sleep when Mike Weeby is gone. Uh, one service says they have already received eight bodies and have 420 orders by people who paid in advance. Wait, how many? 420. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> right on, man. That's what I get, man. When I'm when I'm dead, here's the, here's the thing that I'm thinking about, man. When I'm dead, uh, go ahead and... Uh, and you compost me, but compost me with a bunch of hemp. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, you grind me up, you know, but like like a sweet indica, like a sweet indica, and just grind me up and just pat. Go listen, and then you take a you take a good pound of me down to a Strang Cheese Institute show, and we just and you just hey, pass me around, pass me around. We're all gonna have a good time. We're all going to have a good time. And it's just like, it's like, where's Mike? He's right here. He's right here jamming to these tasty, tasty <laughs> tunes and these crunchy, crunchy licks. You just became the worst imaginable person ever for a few minutes. <laughs> I don't know what's so bad about having a good time. If, hey, man. <laughs> If if being if if being bad is feeling good, then I wanna be bad all the goddamn time. You know what I'm saying? Every day, every day. I got I got uh, I've been I've been I've been pulling out. Check this out. I've been pulling out. Uh, if you were to have to go ahead and put me in a coffin or whatever, like you know, if my mom's being a real bitch and she's got control of my state. Which she probably would. I'm probably get. I probably. Ought, I probably ought to call a lawyer, talk to about it ahead of time. But I forgot to pay my cricket bill. Um, <laughs> but if the if you know if my mom is like insisting on a funeral or whatever, here's what I have been. Uh, I've been pulling out. I got every issue of High Times from uh, 1997 to uh, current, missing a couple here and there. Uh, I I pulled out every single centerfold of weed because you know they do centerfolds in there, and I'm thinking how 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 would it be if you just lined my coffin with all them pictures of that sweet 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 juicy bud that sweet leaf. <laughs> So I'm dead, but I, at some on some level, I know I'm surrounded by bud. <laughs> I'm sure that would be very comforting for you to. It would be good. It's it's what I it's what I would want. Mm -hmm. It is what I would want. It is also what I currently want. <laughs> I, I hope you hang around for a while, but I'm curious mm -hmm. uh, about the bones mulching as quickly. How long does it take? Did well, it say, Kevin, if we're going to... Yeah, for the bones, I didn't get into that, but for the bones, they uh, ground them up. It just said they ground them up to release their phosphorus, and so and then I think after that, they go back into the mulch. Oh. If you, if you, hey, let me ask you this. If you um, <laughs> if you were a body and you were like, like uh, what do you call it, composted in a, in a bunch of hemp, and then them bones got all ground up, what would happen? Hey, for real, what would happen if you snorted that shit? Would you get would you get crunchy? Would you get a little crunchy? I mean, I'm not I'm not a scientist, but it seems like just by being close to a drug, something would get all the characteristics of that drug. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Dude, that is what I'm thinking. It seems very likely. Just have you thought about shredding your your centerfold photos and smoking those? 
I I had read that High Times was trying to get their paper printed on hemp because I don't know if you guys know about hemp. It's the best. It's the greatest substance in the world, and the government doesn't want us to have it because hemp is stronger than steel. It is also lighter than balsa wood. It can be used as plastic. It can be used as eyeglasses. It can be used as you can drink it. You can eat it. You could cover yourself. If you were, if you get hemp oil, you can just rub it all over your body and you don't need to wear clothes at all. It will keep you warm. It will keep you insulated. <laughs> Is there any industry in particular that did, is did responsible? You know that, did, you know, did you know that the Constitution was written on hemp? <laughs> I didn't know that. But. Did you know that the uh, Declaration of Independence was written on hemp? Does that mean? Did that- you know that the Mueller report was written on hemp? <laughs> Project Blue Book about the UFOs. <laughs> you better goddamn well believe. <laughs> know that shit was written on hemp. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's hard to believe. I think, but it's certainly I wouldn't I wouldn't. Think it's hard. It's it. hard to believe because they've been trying to suppress hemp for so long. <laughs> Is her, I was asking, I'm curious if there's a certain industry that is trying to shut down hemp production. Are you aware of like a particular group or, or famous character that is a person in history that has worked to subvert the public's knowledge of the value of hemp? Bill Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> that. I mean, Arkansas, sure. There's a lot of paper mills in Arkansas. I, he, I'm sure. I don't know if you remember this about him. He he famously was like, I smoke marijuana, but I didn't inhale. It's like, you know what, dude? Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Just bragging about wasting some sweet, icky bud. Fuck you, man. <laughs> I'm glad your wife lost the election. I'm glad. I mean, I didn't like Trump or nothing, but I was just like, you know what? If you're going to marry that kind of joker, good. You don't deserve If you're going to ally yourself with a man who is too good to inhale some some just fine green Mary Jane, then you deserve to lose the election. That's what I say. <laughs> So, so is it your opinion then that that more likely than not that Hillary lost the election due to because Bill's a pussy, and, for, <laughs> and specifically his his failure to inhale marijuana and just simply breathe it in, maybe I guess hold it in his mouth and and then blow it out. Is that he what? just I, he I, he no he faked it. You know he just like I, he just he did it like a cigar, which like you're not supposed to inhale. But let me tell you something: when you are, when you have a little bit of that Acapulco gold, a little a little Northern Lights, a little Sensamelia, you, you got to breathe that shit into your lungs and let it fill up. And that's and that's the point when you start to actually get smart that's when you're high is actually the time that you should be running the government because then your mind's going to be free to make all the right decisions i'll tell you what if i was if i was president first thing i'd do is smoke a tasty bowl and then go all right tell me about the ufos tell me about it and then i'd find out then i'd probably tell y'all because we're cool (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, that's the kind of news we need on this podcast i can't yeah. believe we don't have it i'm sorry i got real annoyed with that guy i'm kind of sick of <laughs> it i was about to say it. i can only handle so much of it of before that, was, that guy all right a little, little too on the nose yeah a little too <laughs> it's like i went to college in santa fe for a brief period <laughs> yeah are you saying that, are you saying there's people in new mexico that are <laughs> i think they're similar? everywhere i think they're oh, at yeah. all colleges which is why i don't believe in sending your kids to college homeschool them i agree completely well i don't know that there's anything else to say about that story other than right it sounds like there's a lot of misunderstanding as to what mulch is and what mulch can do and what it can't do Mm -hmm. and i think that that washington state probably needs to launch some sort of campaign some sort of uh, education campaign so that people in washington state can know what they're getting into when they devote their corpses to this type of 
destruction of the body. It seems a little wanton to me. I wonder, I mean, how are you going to get raptured if you're yeah. pieces, right? I don't know that anybody's even considering that in Washington state. <laughs> or you come out the next night and you have 200 gallons of mulch still because nobody <laughs> needs that much fucking mulch. That's the other problem. Oh, there's my dad. And now, now a whole bunch of gross bugs live in where it was. It seems less clean than the cremation. But I do think, though, that any any funeral I've been to, when I think back, like any like open casket funeral, when I think back, I'm like, yeah, I definitely did not need that stroll in front of it for closure. Like, it's not, is it closure? It's, it's weird you had a bad time at a funeral. To see, <laughs> is it closure to get to take one last uh, look at the person you love, but see them in the weirdest, not quite them form of... Uh, the mouth's always weird. The ma- that's the weirdest thing I think is looking at a body. Is the mouth's always like I don't know how to describe this orally, right. but it's always in a kind of Bell's palsy kind of thing going on. You guys are gonna think I'm crazy here. I've never enjoyed going to funerals. <laughs> that's nuts. <laughs> well, is it? I wonder what you think about this. That closure. When people talk about closure, I mean, I guess closure. I'm sure it's important. I'm sure, but when people talk about it, what it really seems like is your last opportunity to make everybody's life revolve around you. That's what closure is. Like, this is my last chance to get some attention out of this. Right. Right. Which is maybe the the worst way to look at it, but I don't know. All these widows and widowers bragging about losing somebody. Yeah. They're just trying to get crying about it. They're trying to get grief dick and grief pussy. Yep. (laughs) Yep. They're that's, it's it's no different than peacocking. It's it's chapter mm-hmm. two. It's peacocking yeah. and then grief sex. That's why, yeah. <laughs> I, I I do expect that if uh next funeral I go to, I'm gonna wear like a knight's armor and just go like <laughs> Right. I always thought it was cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. Yep. <laughs> yep. And then if it was, you know, if, if, with certain people, if they go like, why are you wearing that? I'm like, I'm afraid he'll come back as a lich <laughs> and I'll be forced to defend myself. <laughs> Just every five minutes, take out a different bottle of colored water and drink it. Just keep yeah. replenishing your potions because you never yeah. know when that lich is going to show up. Mind flayers will come to reclaim their amulet even after death. <laughs> I'm imagining a eulogy now where it's it's just nothing but talking about the deceased desire to come back as a lich. Yeah. And all the preparations. <laughs> it's what he always wanted. He always wanted to come back as a lich, and he brokered deals with several demigorgons. I don't know. How does one become a lich? Other than being a, I don't you have to be a necromancer of some. I think work? I think you. Do, I think here's what happens. I think you. Okay. I think you've uh, you know made some sort of uh, deals with the dark arts, and then you die, and then you get your body turned into mulch, and you are composted, and then you rise. Oh my God! Are you Mike? Are you saying? I'm saying that in Washington, there's probably a number of liches right now. There's 400. 20 people signed up to be a lich. Well, I'm sure it's it's the plants that grow within the mulch add life back to that vital essence from the dead body that's made a pact with the other world, as I like to call mm-hmm. it, the other world, uh, and has led to... The OW. Yeah, there's, there's probably lots of liches out there. You know, yeah. there's no telling. Yeah. There's no telling how many liches. I think I've dated a few of them. All right. <laughs> I don't think that word starts with an L, though. <laughs> oh, no. I went oh, there. Oh, my. Oh, my. I went there. We'll probably well, have to take that out. We probably don't want people to <laughs> Yeah, we that. Probably, probably ought to take that out. And also, probably any reference to... Uh, demigorgons? Liches or demigorgons <laughs> or uh, kobolds, because I want to remain, you know, I want to seem cool to all my fans. <laughs> Still, I don't want them to know that I... Right. Never actively engaged. Can the cattle bleep us reference stay in? <laughs> yeah, because that's historical. That was a real, that's a real right. thing. Right. I mean, there could be several cattle bleep high. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't, that's, yeah. I, why you not? Said it right. Okay. I wasn't correct. sure. That was, a, that was a sneeze, not a 
chuckle yeah. or to sneeze. Well, I'm 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 probably ready for the next. Uh, All right. Well, our, story. Our next story comes to us from sciencealert.com, a science website, and the title is "Scientists Have Described a Dinosaur's Butthole in Exquisite Detail." Until very recently, and scientists was it was the exquisite detail that they described? It was just exquisite. <laughs> Well, it's exquisite. Hey, <laughs> hey, Kevin is having a website called sciencealert.com, like having a <laughs> show called International News Service. Is it? Yeah. Is it similar? It's at least as legitimate as having a show called International News Service. Okay. Well, no, I just, go I go here a lot for for new just science stories. Oh, and like that. yeah. Oh, this is where well, I get all my misinformation. It must be legitimate. <laughs> it's, I didn't know that's the way it worked. It had a lot of. Uh, election news <laughs> that's right <laughs> well i'll let you finish the story I, I immediately have a lot of questions but i should let you finish no, well you know i mean no, ask questions ahead, as we go. Go. Okay. Uh, maybe some of them will get answered okay <laughs> scientists have described a dinosaur's butthole in exquisite detail mm. until very recently scientists knew nothing about dinosaur buttholes this changed when a 120 million year old fossil of a i'm gonna mangle this Psittacosaurus was discovered with a perfectly preserved butthole. Now, technically, dinosaurs don't have buttholes, but instead have something called a cloaca. It's, it's cloaca. Is it cloaca? Isn't wasn't that Fozzie Bear's catchphrase? Cloaca, cloaca, cloaca. That's right. That's right. It was. It had. It was a reference to Gonzo's chickens. Yes, His chickens also have a cloaca. Okay, but yeah, they have something called... I'm going to say cloaca, and if I get it wrong, that's fine. Uh, it's sort of a catch-all hole used for peeing, pooing, mating, and laying eggs. All birds, amphibians, reptiles, and even a few mammals possess a cloaca. The fossil in question resides in the Sneckenberg Museum in Germany. <laughs> in- <laughs> this is made up. This is... No. What, what, what mammals have a cloaca? Ah, ah, is it Cher? <laughs> <laughs> No. Why her? Why is she, why is she getting picked on, Mike? I don't know. I don't know. Is it her, her insistence so on believing in life after love? And, <laughs> and your bitterness over <laughs> not finding life after love? I haven't found you anything. Go. I'm in hell. That's right. So mammals with a cloaca include marsupials. Uh, it looks like the uh, platypus? platypus. Yeah, they lay eggs. Some kinds of moles and shrews. Mostly it just gives, uh, like, mammal classes, and I don't know what the fuck metro monotreme is. So the fossil in question resides at the Sneckenberg Museum in Germany and is so complete you that it... You pronounced pres- that wrong two times now. It is... Oh, it's Senkenberg, Sinken, isn't it? Senken, Snecken. The people okay. of Sneckenberg are probably tired of that, so let's help them out here. Yeah. Okay, I, I apologize. Of, it, it, I, don't, it I, don't really, I don't care, though. A lot of war criminals live there, so... <laughs> mm-hmm. It resides in the... <laughs> say uh, it wrong. Well, Fuck yeah, it. say it wrong now. I didn't... Say I didn't it wrong, to, it was, say it wrong to rub it yeah. in their fascist faces. Fucking Nazis. It resides in the Sinkenberg Museum in Germany and is so complete that it preserved the dinosaur's skin and color patterns. A researcher said this took a very long time to study because no one had really done much research into, quote, cloacal openings of living animals. So it was largely uncharted territory. So I, I, have, I have something that I need to say about this, and I'm, I'm sorry... It's just, as I'm reading this, it sounds like we might have the next script for the new Jurassic Park movie. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yes. I have earned any silence. Please continue with the news. Okay. As a result, researchers had to compare the fossilized cloaca to those in modern animals, and not surprisingly, it was different than any living animal. They found some similarities to cloaca in alligators and crocodiles, while they found other similarities in birds. For example, 
A protuberance next to the fossilized cloaca appears similar to one where birds store sperm, and but then a fossilized pigmented cloacal lobe was nearly identical to a pigmented lobe on crocodiles used for scent glands and mating displays. Paleo artist Robert Nichols illustrated these new features, stating, "It has been absolutely amazing to have an opportunity." <laughs> Do you think that's what Robert Nichols sounds like, Kevin? What does an artist sound like? I don't know. I don't think it sounds like you, though. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let me. I'll, I'll work on this. Yeah. You don't sound like you're wearing a beret. He stated, <laughs> "It has been absolutely amazing or to have an opportunity." English. <laughs> English artist. To reconstruct one of the last remaining features we didn't know anything about in dinosaurs. Namely, their buttholes. I've always been in, I've always been interested in cloacas, so this is a real <laughs> I've always been interested in the idea that you could pee poop sex lay eggs from one lay place. <laughs> I've always wanted that. Uh and the fact that we haven't figured out how to have humans with those, I think is one of the big failings of this country, along right. with along with not having socialized medicine. Mm-hmm. Now well, do, those two might go hand in hand also, Mike. That's what I think so. That. I think that's what I think that's what conservatives are so afraid of. They they're right. not ready for cloacals and post cloacal America. Yeah. <laughs> Think think how how simplified your life would be, and it's pretty simple now. If I'm honest, my oh, life oh, yeah. is fairly yeah fairly but, basic but you, and simple. But now. you would agree that it's complicated by having to manage multiple orifices. Holes, yeah, yeah. I'm like, that sucks. I hate it because all the time I'm like, man, I need to pee. I get to the bathroom, I'm like, shit, which one does this come out of? Right. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm sitting there trying to sneeze and I'm like, oh, that's not where piss comes out of. Right. Right. Or you, or you wipe your egg hole, which yeah. is embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you worry that you might go to the bathroom and then be like, oh, I didn't, I didn't need to go number two. I had to lay an egg. That's, Don't worry that's... about it. I let it happen when it happens. I just hope to have my pants off for whatever, but. Um, the fifty-fifty proposition, right? Yeah. Sometimes. What I do, what I do is when I'm feeling any sort of urge, sometimes it's for vomiting. Even I just take off all my clothes and just go stand in the tub, and whatever happens, happens. Just, just hold your arms out, look yeah. up, and just here we go. I'm gonna pee. I'm gonna poop. I'm gonna sneeze. I'm gonna vomit, or I'm gonna lay an egg. One of these things is gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Let's see what happens. And eight times out of ten, it's one of those things. And a couple every once in a while, it's it's something even weirder. Right. But you know what? Life is life is crazy, you know. And you just gotta, mm-hmm. you know, you just gotta get up and you gotta do your gratitude. You gotta be, you gotta have, show some gratitude for for just being alive. Well, guys, I think we really did it. Unless unless there's uh, any more uh, talks about. Cloacas. I, I insist. It's I said cloaca. everything I need to say about cloacas. You guys know my stance. You know where I sit. You know where I sit on it, which is literally on my cloaca. Thank you for listening to the International News Service. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. INS. The news you need.